Siemens new Z-Plug offers quick, reliable Category 6A field termination using a termination module that is compatible with a wide range of cable types and gauge sizes. This video would detail the step-by-step -step termination of the Z-Plug including cable preparation variations for several common four-pair cables including shielded, unshielded, and outside plant constructions. You can verify that all required components and tools are available. Components include Z-plug body, the termination module, Z-plug boot and colored latch protector clip. Note that the optional colored latch protector clip is offered in various colors. The plug and clip can be ordered separately if a color other than black is desired. Required tools include flush cutters, any cable jacket strip tools such as our CPT RGTP tool, the optional green stripping die is recommended for extra large cable jackets such as with our shielded outside plant cable. The Z-plug termination tool will also be required and is included with every standard pack or bulk pack of the Z-plugs. Finally, a small flathead screwdriver may also be helpful if any re-terminations are necessary. Slide on the optional boot narrow end first. Note that for larger outside plant cables, such as our Category 6A version, the boot will not fit without modification. The tapered end of the boot can simply be trimmed if necessary. The boot is recommended but only required if the colored latch protector clip is being installed. Cable preparation for several cable types are included in this video. The Category 6A shielded version is primarily shown throughout the lacing and termination process, but these steps are identical for all other cable types as well. The cable preparation variations needed for other cable types are included at the end of this video. Strip off approximately 2.5 inches or 63 millimeters of cable jacket. Traditional UTP construction will only require the removal of the rip cord and center pair isolator. UTP cable with a foil crosstalk barrier such as our GT cable will also require removal of this foil barrier layer. This should be cut off as close to the jacket as possible. A ground path connection to this discontinuous foil crosstalk barrier is not required. These types of UTP cables are treated exactly like a traditional UTP cable after removing the crosstalk barrier. If you're using typical indoor shielded FUTP cable, invert the foil layer and pull down on top of the jacket such that the conductive side is facing out. This should be lying flat, unfolded, and covering as much of the jacket as possible. For best ground path transfer impedance, the drain wire should also be wrapped around on top of the foil. Wrap this drain wire neatly in the same direction of the door swing on the termination module to prevent it from unraveling during the door closure. Next, remove the cellophane layer, rip cord if present, and the center pair isolator. Following the desired wire scheme depicted on the termination module, arrange the pairs in preparation for insertion. Both T568A and T568B wire options are shown on the sides of the termination module. Pair crossing may or may not be necessary depending upon the chosen wire scheme and which end of the cable is being terminated. For larger conductors, it is important to arrange the pairs in line as neatly as possible to facilitate easier insertion into the module. Arranging larger pairs properly is critical for proper fit and best performance. Any necessary pair crossing should be done prior to insertion into the termination module. With the cable and pairs arranged properly, insert into the termination module and position with the jacket edge or shield layer high enough up to make solid contact with the door and ground clips.
for larger cables, it will help to seat the cable into place with your finger before starting the door closure. With any of the larger diameter cables, it may be necessary to use the Tool Assist feature to help with the door closure. The features on the tool will cradle the termination module and provide the necessary leverage to close the door. Ensure the cable is seated properly to prevent the door latch from deflecting up out of position as shown here. Once the door is closed, the excess foil can be trimmed off. Next, follow the chosen color scheme and press each pair into the lacing channels by spinning once or twice in the opposite direction of the pair twists and pulling over the lacing post. Use diagonal or flush cutters to trim off the excess as close as possible. Orient the termination module with the blue and brown side facing the side of the plug housing with the double cutout. The module is keyed to only go in smoothly in one orientation. Insert until the latch clicks into that first position, then use the Z tool again to fully terminate. The latch will click into the second opening in the plug body and the module should end up flush with the housing. If the boot is being used, slide up and snap both latches into position. It may be helpful to bend the cable slightly in order to provide more clearance for the latch as shown here. The colored latch protector is simply oriented and snapped into place. A protective dust cap, part number ZP-CAP, is also available as an optional accessory and can be installed into the front of the plug while awaiting final installation. The Z-plug is reusable up to at least three times in the event of a miswire. Simply remove the boot and disengage the latch by using the features on the underside of the tool handle. While pressing the latch side of the plug against the tool handle, pull on the cable and gently rock the module out. Once removed from the housing, the door can be opened using your finger or a small flat screwdriver. The cable can easily be removed by inverting and pulling out all four pairs at once. Fully shielded SFTP construction such as our 22 or 23 gauge Terra cable will typically require one variation to allow for proper fit. Some constructions will be too large to allow proper closure of the door on the termination module. In these cases the exposed braid layer can simply be wrapped on top of the foil pairs instead of on top of the jacket, thus keeping the jacket just outside the termination module. As with the drain wire, wrapping the braid neatly in the same direction of the door swing on the termination module will prevent it from unraveling during door closure. If using the CPT tool to score the foil pairs, only rotate the tool around one time with the tension on the handle relaxed to prevent cutting into the conductors. If using outside plant cable with a water blocking gel component, this gel should be completely wiped off from each individual pair. Note that some of the water blocking gel may leak out under certain conditions. 
the gel is non-conductive but may result in unwelcome discharge at the back of the plug. There are commercially available cable sealant kits made for sealing the cut end of gel filled cables but may not be practical for use with a direct termination to a modular plug. The extra large diameter of the outside plant category 6A UTP cable may cause some difficulty when attempting to close the door of the termination module. In these cases, one or both of the ground clips can be removed in order to provide more room and subsequently much easier door closure. The ground clips are primarily for shielded cables, but do provide some cable retention with smaller diameter UTP cables. With these extra large diameter unshielded cables, the ground clips really serve no purpose and can be removed if necessary. If terminating directly onto four pair shielded outside plant cable, such as our category 6A FUTP that has two jacket layers, the outer jacket can be removed such that it remains outside the termination module. The Kevlar strands should be cut off as close to the jacket as possible to expose the foil and inner jacket. The conductive side of the foil is already facing out on this layer so this foil wrapped inner jacket can be used for connection to the termination module similar to an FUTP indoor cable. Finally, the water blocking gel will also need to be wiped off from each individual pair. As mentioned with unshielded OSP cable, some of this non-conductive gel may leak out under certain conditions. The installer may want to take steps to isolate any unwelcome gel discharge over time. UFTP shielded construction may also be used, although not as common. This shielded cable only contains foil wrapped individual pairs, but no overall shield wrap. As such, at least one of the foils and drain wire must be used for proper ground path connection. The other three foils on the remaining pairs can be removed close to the jacket. Unwrap one of the foils from the twisted pairs and rewrap around the outer jacket ensuring the conductive side is facing out. Again, for best ground path connection, the drain wire should be wrapped around on top of this foil. In cases where smaller diameter constructions are used, such as stranded 26 gauge FUTP, it will be necessary to build up the jacket to a suitable diameter for a solid ground path connection to the shield when closing the door on the termination module. This is fairly easy to accomplish by cutting a half inch or 13 millimeter slit in the cable jacket enough to invert the jacket on top of itself creating a double jacket layer. The shield layer can now be inverted on top then continue termination as with solid cable. 